I don't go anywhere. I only go once a day for Pindapata and come back and do meditation. I meditation here. I am not going to give up this effort. You see, this is my uh, my way of life, and I am not going to give it up. So the king got very annoyed. He says, "What? Second time?" He says, "No." Okay, third time he sent him. He said he didn't go. He didn't care. So the minister got very frightened and what to do, and anyhow he had to tell him. So the king said, "Okay, you go and order all the women in this in this town." that they can't feed their babies today unless that monk comes to me so when they are ordered and the people are afraid if they have caught something well, this king was a he was a peculiar chap nobody could depend upon him about his temper so they had to you see stop the little uh, little fellows the babies of their milk now this minister went to the monk and said bante all these little fellows are they are going to be suffering so you know for please for the sake of these little fellows please come he said okay all right all right come on i'll come so he went there So they gave you a very nice room in the palace. He said, "Bhante, you have to stay here and give us some uh, talks." Now it was imprisonment for him; he was jail, but he couldn't help. So they brought the pindapata and he ate food, and then he gave a discourse. He never raised his head like this; he just kept it like this, as he was used to. So now. when the king came and the queen also the he simply said may the king be happy with his head down as he as usual he never saw the king nor the queen he just said may the king be happy so let next time the queen came and the queen was also she came with her people and they sat and bow down and say bante is want to hear dhamma may the king be happy to the queen also the bante said may the king be happy because he never saw her he just kept the eye down like this so whoever came he simply said may the king be happy. now the jhadu wala one who came to gamba clean the room and he bowed down and he said may the king be happy so everybody became king to him now so it became a joke or some or what they went and told the monks look this bhante is doing like this he is calling everybody king so this monks went to the king am bhante and they said bhante what is it you are calling everybody king he said look my dear i don't see who it is whoever comes and sits and then seeks for dhamma i just tell some dhamma that's all now the king got when the king heard this he said he is making everybody king <laughs> that's a very terrific thing so let us let him go So he said, "All right, release him." So he, they released him. Next day, a big crowd of monks came in his cave. They were going about in these various caves. We have very famous caves with uh, a lot of paintings of uh, the lives of Buddhas and so on. Now he had never seen these paintings on the wall and on the uh, floor, the roof. You see on the And then you see in the cave, he had never looked at the cave like this and to see these beautiful uh, frescoes. So this monk said, "Bhante, do you know there are a lot of these wonderful life story of seven Buddhas there?" He said, "No, is it? You know, 
I was here. I am living here from the last 60 years. I now I know that there are these beautiful pictures of Lord Buddha from those who have the eye to see. So now I know. That means he said, I don't have the eye. It's a way of telling them that you youngsters have, you see, eyes to go and see everything round here that you don't have control over your eyes. No sangvara. So the first step in sila is to develop self-control. Silang sangvarathaya. The purpose of practicing the sila is to develop more and more self-restraint, self-control. That turns a person into a very disciplined person. A disciplined person has some complete control in whatever he says, whatever he does, whatever he thinks. So sila, by endowing a person with this ability to control, self-control and self-restraint, and discipline. This is a very, very great acquisition indeed. So by following these silas, you develop parami. All the ten paramis can be developed in some measure. Now, for instance, if you are practicing dana, you give dana as a spiritual practice as a middle path approach to life, to overcome greed, to overcome hatred, to overcome delusion, lova dosa moha. Now to overcome these mental defilements, as you train yourself to be more and more charitable and generous, your mind gets more and more controlled. You have control over your greed, you have control over your other defilements. So, by practicing dana, one can control. And dana is one of the shilas. Adimna dana vermani sikha padam samadhyami. I voluntarily undertake not to steal, not to take what is not given to me. Now, this moral precept I undertake voluntarily in order that I may have complete control over my life. A greedy man has no control over himself. A hateful man has no control over himself, or a deluded man. So by practicing dana, this particular moral precept of not taking anything which does not belong to you, but instead you practice dana, give. You, love, you become generous and uh, you practice charity. So by doing this, not only you purify your, uh, you see, your, uh, purify your mind, but you develop a certain spiritual perfection. Now, for instance, there is a story in the Jataka of Bhagavan Buddha <coughs> as a Bodhisattva. <clears throat> he was a tapasvi, a, an ascetic practicing meditation in the jungle. He lived in, you see, in the forest and he would, his daily routine was to go and collect some leaves, what you call these Brahmi leaves. Onde Laka in, in Kannada, Onde Laka. So he will go, in Himalaya is full of all those. I have been to those places and I have lived on those too. So now, these uh, big, big Onde Laka, the uh, round, uh, you see, leaves, they are called Gotukola in um, Ceylon and Thankuni Pata in Bengali. You see, it's a medicinal herb. So he would go and collect these from the jungle, come and he had a small little pot and he would put the entire thing in the pot and, water, and put some water 
and you'll collect some, uh, fagot, some dry, uh, you see, wood, and uh, you'll put this little, uh, uh, the pot on three uh, stones and uh, on a makeshift oven, and uh, uh, you'll boil. And you'll take it exactly at 11, between 11 and 11.30. Once a day, that was his food. He lived like that years and developed his, uh, all the samadhi and various, uh, you say, supernormal powers. He could fly, he could plunge into the, uh, uh, into the earth as though he is plunging into the river. And he will walk on the river as though he is walking on ground. So all these things he cultivated and he, was, he lived like that, very frugal, just once a day, that was his meal. So he developed very power, powerful virtue, Sīla Bhavana. That Sīla Bhavana, you see, the development of virtue had now become Sīla Vishuddhi, a state of purity of virtue. It's like the animal in the Dhammapada, you have the flower is pure object. And it becomes very valuable and very lovable when it has a lot of fragrance. There are flowers which are very beautiful, but no fragrance at all. So they, people don't care about those flowers. People don't use those flowers for puja, no. For puja you offer only fragrant flower because you are seeking the fragrance of virtue in yourself. So when you offer flower to Lord Buddha and particularly you see fragrant flower and in your mind you should remind yourself if Bhagavan I offer this flower so that my life too will become like this fragrant flower. My actions should be beautiful like the flower. Whatever I say will be very beautiful like this flower. And my mind will be pure like this flower. And I will acquire the spirituality, the fragrance of spirituality in the form of parami and we should be purity and perfection. So now sila Bhavana, by developing Sīla as moral power, as a moral potency, you see, you develop the mind and the purity of the mind to an extent that nothing on earth can change or can, uh, you see, tempt you. So this kind of purity here developed and perfection. So this. Uh, you see, uh, Sakko the Devana Mindu, the, the king of Devas of, um, of the Tabatingsa Devaloka, his seat is called Pandukambala. It's a uh, precious stone, yellow precious stone on which he sat and he gave his, uh, he, he was the king, all his judgments and everything. So his seat became hot, heated by the power of the virtue of the Bodhisattva. So the Bodhisattva, he did nothing. He was living a, a secluded, poor, a vehicle life. But the power he had developed within himself, this power of Sīla, that affected this Deva, you see, who is a protector of Dhamma. And the present Sakko Deva, Indra, is a great devotee of Lord Buddha. He is a Sotapanna. He is one who has entered into the stream of Nibbana. So now, when it became hot, that's his way of getting the uh, message, so to say. So now, he said, what's this? What, who has developed 
more virtuous power than me, he thought. Then he used his uh, supernormal power and found out this ascetic. He said, my goodness, that is his life. He said, terrific purity of uh, virtue. So let me go and test him whether is he, is he a really bodhisattva type or is he just another fellow running after uh, power, psychic power. Let me go and test him. So he took the form, he changed himself in the form of a Brahmin ascetic. There are two types of ascetics those days in India. So one was a free samana, a free, he didn't care about anything of this Chaturvarna caste system and this and that, he had given up all that. He didn't believe in any one of those. And we are supposed to be samanas too. So, as a samana, they, you see, they don't believe in all that. But the Brahmin will retain his Brahman title, if though he has renounced his uh, home life, the household life. But still, he wants to have this Varna thing, that big uh, Varna thing, uh, right, painted on his on his, uh, his forehead. He will go about. He will say, I am a Brahmin. Uh, you see, ascetic. Parivrajaka. Ascetic means Parivrajaka. They are the wandering people. They don't remain in one place. So now, this, he went uh, as a uh, Parivrajaka and he said, Oh, I am very hungry. This was about 11, past 11, he had just, uh, he took that pot out and he had a little bit of uh, a piece of stone, like a katapa stone. And on, that was his plate. And he wanted to put this whole thing on that and eat. And drink that water also. Uh, you see? So now, uh, when he came, he said, I'm in, I'm in Viksha, Viksha, and I'm on my arms round. Oh, yes, oh, what a great, uh, you see, favor you have done to me. I bow down at your feet, oh Tapasvi. And he gave his entire thing that he had boiled it, and it had cooled down. He was just going to eat, you know. And he offered it to him. He said, here you are. This is the, uh, you see, Viksha I have got, I have made it for you. So Indra took it and he went away. Now he came like this consecutively for three days and you see once he, once he gives away the food, he doesn't cook once ever, twice because after 12 o'clock he will never take anything. He let the bhikkhu life, very strict bhikkhu life. So that after 12 o'clock no eating business at all. So he gave it that, the whole thing to him and Indra saw that. So he vanished and he went away. Next day he again came, the same, same dress and same thing. Three days he tested and three days he remained hungry, but never cooked. After twelve. Now Indra on the third day after he received it, he fell at his feet. He showed himself as Indra as uh, Sakko Devanam Indra. Devanam Indra, the king of the king, gods. So, he says, Lord, you are truly virtuous. Are you fulfilling your parami? He kept quiet. He didn't want to, uh, you know, drama. He, he sort of advertised himself that I am a bodhisattva and all that. No. Very humble. He just kept quiet and he understood. So Sila now has acquired that kind of spiritual force from the state of Sikha or training, learning. From that state he has become 
you see, he, uh, he developed the sila bhavana, the intrinsic power of sila, like the, the fragrance of the flower. The sila has its own fragrance, its own power. He developed that. And then further it, it grew into a, uh, you see, a vishuddhi. There are seven stages of purific, spiritual purification. He had developed into that. So he gave away, he didn't care about the fasting three days, but he gave up. He loved to give as a shield. So now, when Indra became convinced, he fell at his feet, he says, Lord, please take this. Now he brought some special food from Devaloka. Very powerful thing that gives him uh, you see, enough nourishment for days together. So he said, no, 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 I offered you, how can I take?